All right, YouTube. Uh, I wanted to revisit this this deal with cross member notching, and I want to show you something that'll confirm what I was talking about about the engine setting to the passenger side. And I should have done this on the previous video, but I didn't do it. Okay, if you notice right here, here's the top hole for the engine mount. Now, if you look in relationship, if I put my finger straight back to where the back corner of that control arm is, see how that top bolt hole. That nub up there is on the inside of where that control arm's at. If you come over here and you do the same thing over here, you see where my finger's pointing? See how it's pointing where if you went in a straight line, you're going to hit that backside bolt for alignment on the upper control arm, which means this one is inside the edge of the control arm. That shows you that the engine sets to the passenger side. If you ever sit and you and you look down at the engine in your car, or V8 especially, and you look at the engine and look at the frame roll over here and then look at the frame roll over here, you'll see that it sets to the passenger side. They did that because you had to have the additional room for your steering column, your steering shaft, and it depends on the vehicle how much it is over there. Now, no, it don't change the center of gravity and make the passenger side of the car got more weight to it. It's not enough to do anything like that. But they did it again. So they'd have room to put the steering in on this side. But again, you can see, you look where that nub's at in a straight line back. You're going to hit the back of that control arm where it sticks out. Come over here. You look at that nub to the control arm, it's completely inside the control arm. And that shows you that the engine sets to that side. Another thing I can show you is you look from here to the seam, right here, how much room there is. And then you come over here, here's where my thumb was, where that other seam's at. See how much closer that is over here? Well, let me see if I can find my tape again. And we'll do this. Okay. Let's just go from the control arm to the top of that. We're just going to put it right there, that corner in there, and tuck it in. We're looking at about three and a quarter inches to the center of that rise part right there. Come over here, and you put that in there and get it about the same place. Let me get it right. You're looking at about two and a half inches. Let's see if I can do it a little better because it's kind of hard to do this. Let's do it on the right over the top of it. Okay, right there. You're looking at two inches to where that center of that little high spot is. You go over here and go to the center of the center on the back side of that high spot. You're just under three inches. So that shows you, again, the engine sets to the passenger side. So when you cut this, and I'll tell you, I used I set my engine in here and put string line with plumb line on it, everything, and just hovered the engine on the stand on flat ground on the floor where it's flat and squared mine up. But if you come from the center of this hole, and this is a 98 chassis, the frames are the same, but they're not the same. Okay? They're a little different behind the engine mounts right here on this part. Bumper horns are different, transmission cross members different, and the uh, 94 and up frames, they boxed it all the way back to the rear spring hangers, and that's why I like to use these chassis, because they're a little stouter. But you can measure off of this, that's what I did, center line, and like I said, I cut four and five. And I did that measuring off of this, because that's about where the center of the pan was when I had the engine hovering, and we measured... I'm like, okay, and then I double-checked on that actually ended up making the center line. So, but I wanted to revisit that real quick. And that shows you, again, 
I don't mean to repeat myself over and over and over. I know somebody may say something about it, but I really don't care. Uh, I take my comments. If they're good, they're good. If they're bad, they're bad. I take them with a grain of salt. But it sets to the passenger side. So just remember that when you go to cut that out, so you don't have extra on this side that you don't need. You want to leave as much in there as you can. The more power you're going to run, the more stress it's going to put on that. And when you cut half of it out like I did, and you're going to throw five, 600 horse or a 1,000 horse engine in here, or boosted engine or whatever you're going to do, like my goal is somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200 horsepower with the new setup, you need to make sure to put some added bracing in. I got this one, and I'm going to put another one once the transmission's in. I see where it's set, and I get the angle set on it. Because I'm using a G, I've got a G Force cross member for this for this truck. Yes, they're pricey, but you know what? You buy one and you're done. I'm gonna use a generic dip down cross member to make me a frame cross member. Then behind the transmission, we're gonna X brace it. So that's it. Later.